take this opportunity to say, uh, to, to first of all, thank uh, um, Hunam and Amir for organizing this event and to say how, how uh, pleased I am to see such a, a wonderful turnout to this important meeting, which is, is critical for, for shaping our agenda going forward. Uh, we're delighted to be working with the Indian Institute of Human Settlements as a leading institution in India uh, we, we couldn't really have, have hope for better partners, particularly as we're looking to, to uh, interrogate the relationship between education and sustainable cities and climate action. So uh, we uh, thank, thank you very much uh, for this, this kind invite and for organizing the meeting today. Um, Amir, I wonder whether, just to start us off, it might be a good idea just to show the brief introductory video. At the heart of the programme is a belief that education systems can support sustainable development. But if education systems are to do so, then they themselves need to be radically transformed. We're aiming to develop a sustainable network of researchers in partner countries to undertake southern-led research into the role of education as a driver for sustainable development specifically in relation to supporting sustainable cities, in supporting climate action, and in supporting sustainable livelihoods and economies, and to co-produce the evidence and arguments urgently needed to transform education and training systems to be drivers of sustainable development. So it's a three and a half year project funded by the Global Challenges Research Fund at £4.75 million. The vast majority of that money will be going to the Global South. Much of it will be used to develop capacity to undertake and administer research amongst organisations that aren't necessarily used to doing research. We're working across four hub partner countries, Rwanda, South Africa, Somalia and India. And there's also a virtual hub where we hope to bring together the evidence and to synthesise it. To me, it means education that is um, relevant to the everyday lives of young people, that is responsible in terms of it's contributing to regenerating the earth, to socially just environments, to gender equality, the sustainable development goals in general, but also that it is reimaginative, that it's a pedagogy of hope. We must do things differently. We must transform. And we must be able to humble ourselves to learn even from people that we thought had nothing to contribute so that our world can be better. So to form partnerships with, with different types of groups that have got different types of you know, skills and it's a kind of research that is kind of co-engaged, a kind of research that's generative, a kind of re research that actually is also a process of, of, of change. I think the challenges in South Africa are, you know, we're struggling with many different uh, historical legacies that we're trying to resolve. But in essence, it's actually about mobilizing learning and uh, social learning and education processes and education institutions to be part of you know, sustainability and so social justice. In the case of Somalia, the formal education system has collapsed um, in the late 80s and early 90s. And since then, uh, you have a fragmented system run by different stakeholders. And the idea is to help them to transform those systems. And Somalia is one of the least prepared um, countries in terms of climate change. And in fact, um, the more, one of the most vulnerable and the idea is to also put climate change in the centre of the, the education that we plan to do. The call for research um, proposals, it could be to do with gender equality, it could be to do with, um, you know, the kind of social inequality that, let's say, a country like India faces. But the end of two decades of reforms told us that uh, things are not moving or changing very much, specifically in terms of children's learning levels. So the learning crisis is quite uh, glaring. They want to see the research that actually comes in to respond to people's challenges on a daily basis, uh, possibly not get lost into academia. It's not business as usual. If you want something new, you're going to work differently. I, I already foresee uh, some non-conventional 
applications from the youth organizations, from the women organizations, from the civil society, because these are the people that actually stay with the local people. They know their concerns. I would like to invite everyone to be part of this project. So please watch out for the announcements for project proposals and bring your wisdom. And we'd like to see how together we can begin to generate new forms of learning that will transform our world. But I'd just very briefly like to just go over one or two of the key aspects of our, uh, our, our network plus uh, that, that I think will be of relevance for today's discussion in terms of framing the discussion. And I'd like to refer back to uh, both uh, Professor Revy and uh, Professor Battery's earlier uh, presentations where they pointed to the centrality of the education SDG in relation to achieving the other SDGs. And um, we know that this is a very complex, non-linear, reciprocal kind of relationship. But we also know that, um, you know, going back to what uh, Poonam was saying, that, you know, there is a learning crisis in, in many, in the four countries that we're focusing on in particular, in India, Rwanda, Somalia, and South Africa. And by that, we don't just mean in terms of scores and standardized tests, we mean in access to a good quality, rounded education uh, that will produce responsible global citizens and help us to transform our economies and societies in, in a way that protects the environment and supports human development. So it's not just about um, getting children or learners into school within the formal sector, but it's also about transforming education systems themselves, as, as, uh, as Poonam was, was, was suggesting. Uh, and she, she usefully pointed to you know, the, the curriculum but also other, other areas, teacher education and so on. And what, what we argue is that actually in order to do this, it requires a systemic response. Um, so we believe that education can act as a driver for sustainable development, but we recognize that if it's to do this, then it needs to be uh, uh, transformed itself. Our vision is for um, is for systems of lifelong learning that can provide learners with the skills, competencies, values, and transformative agency required to meet the challenges of uh, environmentally sustainable and socially just development. So we're interested in the formal sector, but we're also interested in informal learning, in forms of social learning. In the context of cities, for example, how we can work with communities to transform their environment, how we can work with people within uh, local and national government uh, to, to, to help to work with people to, to change their, their situation in the context of climate change. So we're guided by principles. We're guided by principles, for example, of equitable partnership working, which we think is really important if we're going to succeed in our vision the idea of transdisciplinary knowledge co-production. And you know, one of the huge advantages of working with, uh, with the IIHS is that it brings that uh, wealth of uh, interdisciplinary knowledge and understanding, which is crucial if we're, if we're going to be successful. Um, also, you know, we recognize the importance of, of mobilizing capacity at different scales. And lots of what we want to do initially before the launch of the call for proposals is to make a big investment in terms of capacity mobilization. Um, Poonam indicated that we wanted to focus on the most marginalized and you know that's critical because it's often when you when you look at the sharp end, the really sharp end of the effects of unsustainable development that it helps to bring the issues uh, into focus. Um, and of course, in that respect, we're, we, we're very much uh, 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 committed to impactful research um, by involving communities themselves, by bringing the voices of the marginalized together with policymakers and the research community. Um, we, we hope to, to, uh, to create uh, uh, impact from the outset. 
and uh, also that, that we want to be sustainable in our own approaches to research and um, perhaps uh, inadvertently in this case you know holding a zoom meeting to to discuss some of these uh, these issues to engage with with our, our communities and this this context is a good example um, so we in terms of our objectives we want to develop a sustainable network of researchers that reaches across these different interest groups we want to synthesize and disseminate both existing knowledge about how education can support sustainable cities and climate action uh, but also to generate new cutting edge uh, knowledge and ideas and evidence and arguments that are urgently needed if we're going to be successful in transforming our education systems so in india in particular we we want to focus uh, on on the area the relationship uh, between education and sustainable cities and climate action in other parts of the network uh, for example in somalia there's a much stronger emphasis on skills on the development of, of skills so we're looking we're looking at uh, at at, uh, at slightly, we have a slightly different focus in each country. And one of the things that we really want to get out of today's discussion is a sense of the priorities from the perspective of our Indian colleagues. What, what are the things that it's most important to focus on in the Indian context? Um, as Poonam uh, indicated, we also have you know, cross-cutting issues. And she mentioned poverty and gender. But another thing to mention is indigenous knowledge systems. And you know, this is very important because if, if learners are, to, are to, uh, to understand better the challenges of tackling unsustainable development, uh, then this requires engaging not only the formal curriculum, but also local and indigenous knowledge systems, which have been undermined historically from the colonial era but which, which continue to have, hold potential for transforming our, our understanding of, of, uh, of, of the issues involved of sustainability. So we're drawing on an existing network. We have, um, the, besides the four countries that we're working across, India, Somalia, Rwanda, and South Africa, uh, we also have links with other, for example, GCRF funded projects. And I know some of you are involved in those. Uh, the IIHS is involved in some of those. Uh, we're also very linked into UNESCO uh, networks and, and, and other, and other uh, important networks of researchers and policy makers. We want to expand that network, hence the Network Plus. So, half of our money will be used to fund new research. And this is really exciting opportunity. Um, this is the thing that really makes me perhaps the most excited uh, in that I hope that we'll be able to develop some really good quality Southern led research involving both experienced researchers and policy makers, practitioners, but also our marginalized communities who don't usually get a, an opportunity to get involved in this kind of research. But for the reasons that we've mentioned, we feel that's, that's critical. We're looking to fund probably, you know, 88 projects overall across the network. So a quarter of those, 22 or so, would be in India. And they would vary in scale and scope. So we're looking to fund, you know, a, a couple of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, projects at around 100k, sorry, excuse me, I'm using Great British Pounds and I can't, uh, I don't have the mental arithmetic uh, to translate that into, uh, into to rupees, but I'm sure you'll be able to do that uh, yourselves. But uh, essentially, um, you know, we're, we're looking there perhaps to have a couple of projects led by perhaps some more experienced research teams, but involving others, but also uh, more medium and smaller uh, uh, scale projects funded at uh, 30,000 and 10K respectively, that will really, uh, we hope, be, be uh, led, uh, especially the, the, the smaller ones by early career researchers, um, from either from universities or from the, the, the communities, people based in NGOs, 
not necessarily people based in universities. So we we hope um, that that, uh, that we'll be will be uh, issuing a call for proposals uh, for these projects um, in uh, in December. So at the moment, what we're trying to do is to really in, engage with people in in our partner countries to identify priorities, ways of working, um, and, and and potential partners. As I say, we, we're aiming to issue a call for proposals in December that, that is informed by some initial work around, uh, around these, uh, the existing evidence base that uh, Hunam and Amir uh, and the, the rest of the, the network are working on at the moment, country background papers and uh, papers looking, exploring, investigating, looking into the existing evidence in relation to education and sustainable cities and climate action. But of course, you know, we, we have been hit by, by the COVID-19 and, you know, on the one hand, when this first happened, we found this to be quite a disruptive thing in the sense that, you know, we planned, I was hoping to be with you in person in, in, uh, in, in uh, Bangalore and, and Delhi and to, to talk about these issues face to face. But of course, that's not possible. But of course, you know, every dark cloud has a silver lining and you know, we, we, we do have some emergency funding that we're using to do some initial research around COVID-19. And I think perhaps um, Amir and Kunam will be able to explain that a little bit more, what's involved in that, uh, in, 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 in that research. But from our perspective, we're hoping to understand better how, what, what the experience of C-19 can tell us about uh, the, about, uh, how education systems can respond in times of crisis. And we'll feed that, uh, that, that, that experience into our call for proposals as well. We, we're going to scaffold our work, our, our research, we're going to support our research teams um, with, uh, with, with uh, research uh, uh, training, capacity mobilization. So once we've launched the call for proposals, we'll bring people together. Remember, we're trying to target here people in, in many instances that may not be familiar with, with writing research proposals. So we want to provide plenty of scaffolding at the outset to, to help people um, develop proposals that they think are important to them. Um, the the uh, proposed successful proposals will be announced in May next year. And uh, we'll then have some further research methods uh, workshops. And uh, the large projects will run between July 2021 and November 2022. The medium and smaller scale projects between August 21 and July 22. And during that, there'll be ongoing support for project teams. And this is important, again, you know, because we'll be working with perhaps people that, that, uh, that are not used to conducting research. So we want to provide a lot of scaffolding on the ground in the field uh, through regular visits and with, with, with project teams. And uh, we, we want to present the findings of our research and the synthesis work that we'll be doing. We want to synthesize the evidence across all of the projects in India to try and arrive at some global understanding uh, of, of the issues and challenges involved in transforming education systems. And we'll present, we'll be inviting people from the projects, but also people involved in the synthesis work to present their findings at a conference in Cape Town in April, 2023. So I hope that gives you a sense of flavor of what we have in mind. It's, I think it's very exciting. I think that you know, in terms of the post-colonial challenge, the decolonizing challenge, it's, it's really important uh, because we, can, we have the potential here for some really good, uh, high-quality, southern-led research involving marginalized communities. And of course, in terms of the climate crisis and the challenges facing our cities, you know, I don't think that this kind of research could be more timely. So I'll leave it there, Poonam and Amir, and I'll hand back to, back to you.